Fáilte. So I wanted to do a piece on the Hawthorne folk and fairy traditions around the Hawthorne tree, also known as the White Thorn in Ireland. And I was having a look on Dukas.ie and the school's collection. And as usual, I was just searching for Hawthorne and going through the entries. And trawling through them, all I keep coming up against is the fairies. So I decided to just give in. I am doing a class on native Irish trees at the end of the month for the irishpaganschool.com and I do one every month there so go and check those classes out if you're interested. But for now we're just going to stick with the Hawthorne in relation to the fairies and of course most of these, I mean you must be getting the picture by now, but most of these stories that we have in our fairy lore tradition in Ireland centre around not messing with the fairies and just leaving them alone to their business. Okay, so we're going to take a little bit of a closer look at that today. So I'm going to share this here and you can have a look. So uh, this story is from County Donegal and you can see here it's recorded in a lovely hand. One time a man named O'Donnell had some men working on the bog. There was an old hawthorn tree growing there and the men rooted it out, rooted it up and threw it aside. Um, working on the bog would be cutting the turf and turf would be our mainstay uh, fuel really in, in rural Ireland particularly. So we, uh, most houses would have a patch of bog assigned to them from the 30s, most of the rural houses from the 1930s when the government kind of went through and divvied it all up and you would have your your rights to cut the turf out of the box. So this provided the warmth and uh, cooking and, you know, keeping the damp out for the year for most families in rural Ireland. And people still do it. So, um, so they had cut up this hawthorn tree and threw it aside. At dinner time, the man sent his little son to a stream that was close by for a can of water. He met a little man and the man said, follow me. The little lad followed him. When the boy did not return, when the boy, where am I? Oh my goodness. Little lad followed him. When the boy did not return with the water, the father set out to see why he delayed so long, but he could not see his son anywhere around. He then became alarmed and all the men set out to search for the boy, but it was of no use. The boy had disappeared. And I do find it very interesting, actually, well, a little bit amusing, that in the, um, in the transcription here, this turn of phrase, but it was of no use, um, the translator or the transcriber is not Irish because um, they put a little sick note in there where... Um, they didn't recognize the turn of phrase, but that's exactly what's written there. But that would be a very common turn of phrase in Ireland. So it was of no use. At last, one of the men remembered that the tree they had, about the tree that they had rooted, and told the father that perhaps they had done wrong by interfering with a hawthorn tree. The father then put the tree back again to its old place, and shortly afterwards, they saw the little boy at the bank of the, oh my goodness, I'm just all over the place today, I'm sorry. At the bank of the river. When asked where he had been, the boy replied that he had met a man who had made him follow him step by step. And I found the step by step thing very, very interesting because it wasn't just a, you know, follow me. It was in the bog, which can be quite dangerous. So, I would take this more of a warning than, you know, that there was necessarily any evil intent. Um, the fairy that had led the boy away could have led him into a sinkhole and bog, but the fact that he was to follow him step by step would seem to me that the boy was kept safe um, until the fairies would see what the men would do and if they would cop on to themselves. So we do see that sometimes where there's kind of, where there's a relationship between the fairies and Irish people generally, even if not individually. Um, they do kind of give us a break sometimes if we do something a bit ridiculous and 
without realizing that we're um, causing them some trouble or some damage to their stuff. Okay, so we are also going to look at another story from, I'm not going to go for the Witch of Coxtown. Actually, we might come back and just throw that in at the end anyway. But what I'd like to do is look at an old hawthorn tree. And this one is from County Donegal as well. As it happens, I was not just looking for County Donegal. Once there was a time, there was an old hawthorn tree in William Harren's field. Fairies were supposed to have music and dancing every Friday night. I wonder, did they put up a poster? Never know, I suppose. Every Friday night, the music and the dancing. They lived under the tree. One night, William's father was going past the field and he heard great singing and dancing and music. He listened for a moment, then he went on. The next day, he said he would cut down the tree. So he set off to cut the tree. When he hit the tree a couple of times, a terrible pain went through his heart and he fainted. When he came back to life, he said he saw a bad looking man flash across his closing eyes and he died a few days after this happened. And again, I, I kind of like, there's a lot of stories like this, right? But I like this one because, and I don't know if it's intentional or coincidental, although I, I don't really believe in coincidences anymore, but the Hawthorne berries are specifically good for your heart. And they will actually deal with, uh, medically deal with arrhythmia. So if your heart is beating too fast or too slow, they will actually steady it and level it. And I just can't help but wonder if there's a little, um, a little bit of wisdom there or a little bit of uh, correspondence there to the fact that this man had his heart stopped. Now, Hurting somebody's heart is a very effective way to take them down if they're trying to cut down your hawthorn tree. And uh, we, we do have to kind of note that as well. Um, but yeah, the witch of Coxtown. Uh, once upon a time, there lived an old woman in a lovely little cottage in Coxtown Wood. She was supposed to be a witch. She liked no one and no one liked her. She used to do a lot of mischief on the people and she had magic power. She used to take hens and calves and cows at night, and she used to steal even children. She could turn herself into anything. One day, she put the form of a dog on her and went off to a farmyard. She wanted to take away cows, but the farmer saw the strange dog driving away his cows, and he got his gun. He struck the dog and killed it. The witch was never seen again. And that's a very common play. Um, I haven't seen her turn into a dog before. Uh, usually it's a hare where she's being chased by the hunters or being chased by the dogs. And this would seem to be maybe a, a slightly later version of that story where um, the witch is, is being a little bit more demonized. Because in some of the earlier versions of the story, what we see is a poor L one who happens to be able to turn into a hare and is making a bit of money off the, the local gentry, maybe. Um, in one of my previous stories, you can check out the, the playlist for uh, some other versions of this story that have come up. But, um, but in this one now, she's, she's specifically up to mischief and um, malevolent magic. So uh, that is an interesting one, just to kind of show you the, the little bit later. So we leave it there for now. And we, as I said before, we do have, stop that share, um, we do have a folklore video every Friday here, so subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications, and I will be wandering around the countryside a little bit more in April and May, so make sure and subscribe if you're interested in some live videos from the sites and bits and pieces around Ireland because uh, there'll be a bit of that going on, as well as our regular videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So uh, it's long of all, and I will see you in the next video.